Welcome to our meeting for this Sunday, the 16th of May. Um, yeah, we're looking at um, working together this morning, and we have special guests helping us today, and they are Major David Evans, who's the Territorial Ecumenical and Interfaith Officer, and his wife, Sarah, Major Sarah Evans, who is Director for Wellbeing at the Salvation Army UK and Republic of Ireland Territory. So we're looking forward to hearing from them later on in our meeting. As I said, it's um, working together and you'll see how that and ecumenism and everything like that will come in to our thinking and uh, our thoughts later. Just some notices and information for this week. Don't forget that uh, come tomorrow at 10 o'clock you will, you will be able to book for uh, next Sunday's meeting, um, which is going to be physically here at, um, at the hall, God willing. And... Um, Instructions have already been sent out on my newsletter and via Facebook, so just acquaint yourself with those, and hopefully we'll, everything will go smoothly. Don't forget there is a telephone booking if you're not able to uh, book online. We do have coffee and catch-up um, tomorrow at, um, at 10, and at 11 o'clock on Thursday we have Bible Fellowship. So... Um, the other thing I need to uh, remind you of: next Saturday, um, we are having a, we are hosting a prayer event online uh, for Thy Kingdom Come. Thy Kingdom Come is an international, national, ecumenical prayer event uh, that happens every year. It goes from Ascension to Pentecost, and uh, next uh, Saturday on the 22nd, we're hosting online. Uh, from 8 till 9 p.m. Again, I'll send out some links and stuff in Facebook and email for that. Shine, Jesus, Shine is our first song. And the songs today have been, uh, uh, have been, um, have been selected um, by um, David, uh, Major David, and uh, this is his first choice. And uh, just, a f fantastic, uh, just a fantastic song, isn't it? Uh, Fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Such a positive message, and I hope somehow by the end of today, even, even now, that you have that sense uh, of filling our hearts with the fire of the Holy Spirit. So, six, two, six, one, sorry, 261 in our songbook, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Chelmsford Songsters are going to help us with this. Shine, 
Great, shall we pray? Father God, again, we thank you for this opportunity of meeting together. And we just pray again that we will be inspired and that your Holy Spirit will indeed minister to us as we watch uh, and, yes, take part, sing, listen uh, to our meeting this morning. And uh, we just ask that, yes, we will be inspired uh, by what we hear. Lord, be with us. We think of those who perhaps uh, are not so well today, uh, perhaps are not able to be with us and not in, uh, online even. So, Lord, thank you. And just give us a blessed time of worship today. Amen. So I said today we're thinking about ecumenism, uh, which is a word I try and get me a tongue tied around. I know many of you know that I'm a rural chaplain, and as part of that is a very ecumenical role. Uh, I'm a chaplain at the uh, at the Otley uh, Rural College. Again, that's a, a multi a multi-denominational uh, role there, and Lightwave that I'm involved with. So I thought it'd be really great if we could get Major David to come and speak about his passion, his, his thinking about ecumenism in uh, in UK at the moment, and especially the Salvation Army's role in that. And we'll hear more of that throughout the meeting today. But now we're going to listen to the band and this is an arrangement of song 400 in our songbook. And it's, we are standing on holy ground. And I know there are angels all around. Let us, pr let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. And indeed, wherever we are, we, uh, if we claim uh, Jesus Christ as our saviour, we are standing on holy ground. So let's listen to the band just now. So thank you, band. That's, uh, that was a really lovely uh, arrangement of that song. Now, we're going to hear from, uh, from Major David and myself. I interviewed him uh, about several different things. And uh, we're going to start off with this first section about something about David's background and his role within the Salvation Army. 
So we uh, like love to welcome Major uh, David Evans, who uh, is the Territorial Ecumenical and Interfaith Officer for the UK Territory. And I've got to know David um, quite well over the last um, several years. And, not, um, not too much. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I've known Darren, David and Sarah for a little while and uh, it, we've been blessed by their ministry in the past. So really, David, um, I just want to fi uh, find out something about your background and your history um, in the Salvation Army and elsewhere. Yeah, well, Italy, born into the Salvation Army, both my parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents. And on my father's side, that's the Welsh bit my great great grandparents were or became salvationists during their lifetimes. They included Baptists, Welsh Baptists, Welsh speaking Baptists, Presbyterians, and a few church in Wales oddities. My granny Fisher, an erstwhile Calvinist Methodist, goes back to the opening of Cardiff Stewart Hall, which I believe was the second forever that was commenced in Wales in 1874. Um, on my mother's side, there are still three generations uh, which go above me, uh, which included an, an amalgam of brethren, uh, Jews, converted Jews, congregationalists, all with the exception of my mum's dad, who remained a faithful brethren. Now I have to say, he was often found worshipping at the army, particularly in the salvation meeting, which he said was a lot livelier than his own fellowship. My parents were officers, 67 and 61 years respectively, mainly as corps officers stationed in the UK, not including Ireland, but not forgetting they were stationed in the Republic of Yorkshire where my big brother was born. You don't have to be a brain surgeon uh, if you're wanting to find out about my background to know that my brother, who is a orthopedic surgeon, and I grew up in a variety of places, attending eight or nine schools respectively, covering four different O-level, that's GCSE for the young people here, and a huge variety of accents and cultures. My earliest memories were the army. They were yellow, red, and blue. And my parents fitted that definition, that characteristic description of Salvationists totally. They were army through and through. But one thing I do remember right through their ministry as a child growing up was the, the use of John chapter 17 and particularly verse 21 where it was central to everything they did as Christian ministers and Salvation Army officers. Station for 10 years, I grew up in Liverpool. I even sometimes have the accent when Archbishop Warlock, Bishop David Shepherd, and the Methodist moderator, the Reverend John Newton, walked down Hope Street in 1987. It started uh, what had been an awful relationship between Protestants and Catholics, it started to change. And it was because of these two gentlemen and the Reverend John Newton that the relationships improved. Today, Liverpool is known as the most ecumenical city in the UK. My late dad had been the moderator in the city for the free churches here a decade later that it was now a much happier place couldn't have made a retired officer any happier his successor john newton said these words and i'm going to quote this because it's worthwhile listening to my hope and prayer is that as christians draw closer together so they will work more effectively as our mission and service to god's children United, our resources can be used to minister to the needs of a broken world, bringing hope to the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, and those who've lost faith or those who've never had one. As I said, my parents were yellow, red, and blue. So is my wife, Sarah, and I. But we're equally as desiring of that, the fact that the body of Christ 
with its huge diversity of 30,000 different denominations and growing by the year, becomes a body, which is and can be described as rather than not being army, ecumenism is actually our DNA okay. as Christians. Sarah read earlier in our meeting from Psalm uh, 133, how good and how pleasant it is when people, God's people live together in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Big question, a lot of answers. Amen, amen, thank you. Thank you, David. So what now is your current role within the Salvation Army uh, UK Territory? Uh, since 2017, I was appointed as the Territorial Ecumenical and Interfaith Officer. But ever since I was commissioned since 1984, both 27 years as a Corps officer and on DHQ here in Anglia and as a mission officer in North Wales, I've always tried to work ecumenically wherever that was feasible and possible to do. Amen. My experience of ecumenism as a Corps officer, though I agree it's very subjective to my and my wife's experiences, has always, where ecumenism has been allowed to flourish, there's been growth. And by growth, I mean not just numerical growth, but across the board within multiple churches. And we are seeing the fulfillment of scripture, particularly in the, the expression, the illustration, beautiful illustration, that General John Gowans used, that we're here to save souls. We're here to grow saints. And we're here to serve suffering humanity. I, I personally believe that's the DNA of the Salvation Army. Yeah. But I go on to say it's also the DNA of the body of Christ, is known as the church, of which we are part. The pandemic, which we've all suffered this last year or so, right across the globe, seeing Christians from Roman Catholics, Orthodox to Pentecostals, coming together and reacting as the body of Christ should react. Or as Bishop David Shepherd and Archbishop Warlock's book underlined, Better Together, I recommend you read it. Song 980 is another song chosen by Major David. And uh, it's an oldie, but a goodie. It's one that I haven't sung for I don't know how long. But soldiers of Christ arise, the day is drawing nearer. Shake the slumber from your eyes. The light is growing clearer. Perhaps we should have had that as our first song today as we shake the slumber from our eyes. And the, the chorus, of course, says, storm the forts of darkness. Bring them down, down, down. Now, somebody told me that this was an old beer song. I, I don't know if that's right, but uh, and you know the story that Will, if William Booth said, oh, why, can, why does the devil have all the best tunes? And he used to adapt tunes of the day and put um, religious uh, words to them. It were songs that people recognise or tunes people recognise and he put his own words to them. So let's join in with 980, Storm the Forts of Darkness. And then following that, Major Sarah Evans is going to bring us our Bible readings. <laughs>
an Old Testament reading from Psalm 133, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil of consecration poured on the head, coming down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, coming down upon the edge of his priestly robes, consecrating the whole body. It is like the dew of Mount Hermon, coming down on the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life for evermore. Thank you, Sarah, for, for those readings. And again, you'll see, the, uh, uh, you'll see the significance of those later on in our meeting. We're going to listen to a song and join in, if you know. There's no songs in our song, words in our songbook for this one. It's Build Your Kingdom here. It's a familiar song for many people and it's got quite popular in, the, in recent years. But it's all about building the kingdom of God here on earth. And we have to do that together as denominations. We have to do it ecumenically. So you can see why this song was chosen today. It's a Regent Hall worship group going to bring us Build Your Kingdom here. And then following that, we're going to have uh, the next bit of the, my interview with uh, Major David. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now.
you may have answered this already, this question, but uh, the next really, I want to say ecumenism, ecum I can never say it, ecumenism, <laughs> ecumenism, thank ecumenism. you David, why, uh, well, is it, just, why is it so why important? Is it important? <laughs> uh, why is ecumenism important? Um, for the doctors in 1985, Liverpool depressed and with political strikes going on all the time, this is what two dockers thought of the word ecumenism when they were asked by somebody from the BBC. I suppose it means those two bishops fighting to keep our jobs. The chief executive of Liverpool stated, that's the chief executive of the docks, stated Liverpool can fracture very quickly. He went on to say, but the fact that these two bishops can work together has a remarkable uniting effect. If collaboration can happen between two different religious factions, it can happen in industry, it can happen in race, and it can happen in politics. Sarah read from John 17, a passage which is fundamental to my role. It's often referred to as the high priestly prayer, some of you will know it off by heart, I'm sure, where Christ prays for each child of God to abide in the same unity that exists between him and his father, allowing for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, therefore making a oneness, not just between the Godhead, but between us with the Godhead. Why? The ultimate uh, result of diverse Christians doing things together is that by our love, even within that diversity, the world starts to believe that Jesus was sent by the Father. Verse 22 is a good verse. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I don't know if you're into prophecies, but this is a prophetic word shared in the present tense by Jesus. And it was about those who are not yet saved, not yet born again. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. Thank you. Yes, that's uh, so, so important. So the biblical background to ecumenism, um, you've, you've almost, you've touched on that, but what is the biblical um, background to, to what you do and what, what we, we, I think we believe we have to do? The important question is this, are ecumenical ventures right? Are they biblical? Should we be daring and be involved with other Christians in joint ventures locally? in Ipswich, regionally in Anglia Division, nationally in the UK or internationally. They're all important, which is why we have the World Council of Churches, why we have churches together in England, churches together in Great Britain and Ireland. It's why we have your local churches. It's all part of that body image which scripture speaks of. Of course, as the scriptures are underlined, Unity is essential. So the answer to the question, well, it's a no-brainer. A second question on ecumenism, on ecumenism is what is its ultimate goal? Does it mean we will not be army? Or that we will all look and be the same? Total uniformity, all looking like Orthodox or Catholic Christians? or Anglicans, or holiness traditional churches, or the Salvation Army? Is there a different meaning to what we generally see as unity as the body of Christ? I've been a Cumanist all my life, ever since I got saved at the end of age of 16. And I see ecumenism better together, which is a much better way of saying it, and I can go with it, and Andrew as well. I see it as unity in diversity. We sing in the songbook, in song 1011, in the new songbook, verse 3, from every tribe, every race. We can sit down together. 
because when we get to heaven, that's exactly what we do together. Whatever our church tradition, whether we wear uniforms or medieval skirts, bang drums or play organs, whether our churches are in pubs, have domes or in tents or are schools every other day of the week, just like a football team, which is full of different players doing different things, having different skills, tall, short, fast, skillful, tacklers. The ultimate goal is to be as effective as what we can be. Living in a lost and dying world, which we can't argue about, we can hardly bring glory, glory to God if we're superior over others or we're indifferent to others' needs or if we all do the same thing, which doesn't allow for the different characteristics that make us human, truly human. Anything that brings ultimately glory to God is all is the only motivation we should really need to interact with our world, to interact with each different church and denomination in which we share our area. Prayers are now going to be led by a major Sarah. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your beautiful, multi-generational, multicultural family, the church, gathering together today online or in person in so many places around the world. We pray that you would revive us sanctify us and set our hearts on fire with the good news of the gospel. We pray for those who are lonely and isolated. May they know that you are with them. We pray for those who are crying, the sad, the depressed, the anxious, those who are ill and those who are concerned for loved ones and those who mourn in loss and bereavement. May they know your comfort and peace. We pray for those who are in pain, suffering from illness, either physical or mental. We pray for healing. We pray for those who are thirsty for God. May they be truly satisfied. We pray for your church here in Ipswich, in this town. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to pray together this week through the Thy Kingdom Come Prayer Initiative. Help us to discover fresh and living ways in which we can express our unity in you through loving words and spirit-inspired actions. And we pray for our own congregation, the Ipswich Citadel Salvation Army, particularly as we prepare to return to gathered worship next Sunday. We thank you for your faithfulness over the past 14 months and now we pray that you would guide us in all that has been planned. We pray that the practical arrangements and technology would run smoothly and we pray even more that we would sense your Holy Spirit moving among us, blessing us with fresh hope and unity, both those who are gathered at the hall and those who are at home. Lord, you said, see, I am making all things new. Lord, your words are trustworthy and true. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And so we make our prayers in the powerful and in the hopeful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, for those prayers uh, for, for this morning. Again, our final bit of my interview and uh, my discussion uh, uh, with Major David just now. So the final question um, is, how can we be encouraged to embrace working together with other churches and denominations? Well, that's an enormous question, bearing in mind there are 30 thousand different denominations across the globe but I, I think you're talking about 158 churches in, in Ipswich yes it basically which is approximately fit, the, yeah whatever there is in Ipswich I, I think that somebody told me there's 100 different churches in Ipswich but uh, yeah I, I looked on Google and it said 158 but right. it did include a few in the outer Hebrides um, <laughs> I, I believe the answer depends on just how open we all are 
to the leadings of the Holy Spirit. If you look at it at its basic nature, it's relational. It's about networking. It's about being the body of Christ. It's being Christian. As Doctrine 3 of the Salvation Army states, we believe, and you all know this off by heart, that there are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, undivided in essence and co-equal in power and glory. As Christians, we, we have in this doctrine, in the Bible, already an example of relationship. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One body, one church, one God, but three distinct personalities with three distinct roles. The key is the mutuality of their relationship. Total unity in diversity, but still being one. When it comes to it with Citadel, I would want to know first who individually you have relationships with your family, your school, your college, your street, your work, thinking of Andy Jacobs, your football team, your food bank, your surgery, your local allotments, etc. Who among those do you know actually love the Lord? Which church do they worship in? How healthy is that church? Could we individually help in any way? Or could we do with their help? On a corporate basis, as, as a congregation of Ipswich Core, who do we have relationships with among our neighboring churches? Just the clergy? Is it just the officer who mix together? Not that that's a bad thing. In fact, that's a good thing. And your CEO, without making him having too big a head, certainly does you credit in that light. But what about the core? What's your relationship with these other body members? In looking at relationships, start by looking at your own denomination. I know, as the previous DYO, DYS, that there are three core. There's Bramford Road Corps, there's the Priory Centre, and there's Ipswich Citadel. What is your relationship with these core like? Only you can answer that. But just looking here at the Salvation Army Ipswich, unity in our diversity is already seen between those three different expressions of the same denomination. I go further. Are you involved in ecumenical endeavours, such as the obvious one, which many core are, food bank? They don't often do it on their own. They do it with other groups. Street pastors. I know one DC uh, who, who, because of street pastors, introduced his division to the concept, and virtually every core with eligible people in it has become part of that street pastors group. Christian football netball leagues. When I was DYS, I played football for the, the Norwich Christian Football League for Norwich Citadel B team, which actually knocked out the A team, so I'm quite proud of that. Lens studies, we can do that together, introducing people to new people, to new friendships, joint holiday clubs. You know, many churches don't have the resources to do it on their own. But the big church down the road could say, can we help you in your community with a holiday club? March of Witness, Suffolk County Show, joint youth clubs on the same basis as the holiday club. Well, being community space. At the end of this COVID-19, there are going to be huge demands. Are we ready for it? Could we do it better together? Good Friday shared worship. I have to say, as a core officer, it's sometimes been seen as an excuse for a night off. That's for you to comment on. Easter sunrise services. When we 
uh, were in Wrexham, North Wales. The very first year we started the sunrise service and there was just a band of 15 there, that was it. At the end of 10 years, there was 150 there from 14 different churches. It's well worth doing. What about Youth for Christ? When I was in Norwich again, Norwich Youth for Christ, I believe Ipswich had the equivalent in those days, where joint evangelical missions to towns could take place. Karen um, Gritham, who's the core officer at Swanage, is also the chair of the county ecumenical body. As a result of her Salvation Army fervor, they now go door to door with leaflets, advertising things, all the different churches, including Christmas Day meals, including all the practical things there. The pandemic has shown incredible joint of action, with meeting the community's needs, even providing online worship to the elderly congregation 30 meters up the road who don't have the expertise. I've only just started to scratch the surface of those things that already exist in the United Kingdom, quick to land's end. Call it receptive ecumenism, which actually is another word for better together, equally receiving from each other, united in our diversity, which is being blessed by the Lord. It's interesting, just at the moment, the National Ecumenical Offices, of which I'm one, are traveling around England to the intermediate bodies and looking at the strengths and the weaknesses of regional and county ecumenism. Where churches are seen to be working together effectively, the evidence is growing after just eight visits so far this year that show that church numbers are also growing. May I remind you of Sarah's reading from King David's Psalm 100. That's one which said how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Friends, when you know your area, when you know the needs of your community, when your hearts pulsate with the passion of God's redeeming grace for a needy world. Verse 3 starts to become a reality. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Friends, that is the army. That's our DNA. And the question which I leave with you is, are you in it? Thank you, David, for those encouraging words, and uh, I'm sure they will be an inspiration. To, well, they've been an inspiration to me uh, today, and uh, I just pray that they will be to to us at um, uh, it's, it's Citadel. So, thank you so much again for sh uh, for sharing with us y your passion for ecumenism uh, and working together, better together, as you said. And I, I think that's something we need we need, and it's good to go on with. So, thank you again, David. God bless you all. Can a nation be changed? Can a nation be changed? We've heard in, from Major David this morning about his passion for ecumenism, ec ecumenism how we can work together. And now that, that, this song came to me as I was thinking and reflecting on what David had to say to us. Can a nation be changed? We believe, yes, it can. So let's listen now as Yvette brings us that lovely song, Can a Nation Be Changed? And if, you, perhaps, if that resonates with you, that perhaps you want to change, pray about it as you listen to this song. Shall be 
we pray. Lord, we thank you for all the different expressions of your church we see in our town, Ipswich. All these different expressions who are serving uh, and worship, worshipping you and, and the community in our, this our town. Help us find the ways so that we can work together. Help us to be in it. Yes, Lord, we are different, but we all worship the same God who commands us to share his love with everyone. Help us to do that despite our differences and inspire us to work together for your kingdom here. Help us to change. We do thank you for David and Sarah and we just ask your blessings upon them in their service to you. Lord, we ask this and all our prayers in and through your precious name. Amen. So, uh, our final song is uh, again chosen by uh, David, and it's, uh, oh, it's a familiar and it's a great song to finish our meeting. I'll go in the strength of the Lord in paths he has marked for my feet. I'll follow the light of his word. Well, you can sing along with uh, 9 5 nine in our song but again i just want to thank majors david and uh, sarah evans for their help and inspiration for uh, for us today in this our meeting following this song we're going to have the ipswich blessing which is a uh, is a song that was very popular in in recent months and it's this is all many churches around Ipswich got together and produced this uh, song for our benediction today so song what, five, nine, five, nine. I'll go in the strength of the Lord, then the benediction. So God bless you all. And don't forget, um, to, uh, we're meeting physically next week. And there's ways to book that. Uh, or you'll see that on Facebook as well. So again, God's blessings to you all.
Thank you.